So, Mr. Shank, he Shin, yep. yeah, with Let's Power the Analytics and 3D yep. to the web based military geo portal using Phos4G. Thank you. Hello, everyone. Uh, once again, my name is Sang Shin, and uh, it's my great pleasure to share my real experiences with the uh, Korea Ministry of uh, Defense, National Defense. And this is a real project. So, I will talk. Talk, I'll talk about like this. So, introduction. Actually, the project name was the project uh, development of open source based military geoportal system. And then uh, we've done this project last year for six months. And our project client was Ministry of National Defense, uh, specifically to say Korea Defense Geospatial Intelligence Agency. They, the, that organization produces all the military maps and the geospatial intelligence for Navy, for Air Force, and the Army as well. So they are in charge of all kinds of military geospatial information in Korea. Also, project outcome was very clear. They want to have a web-based 2D, 3D geoportal system in their intranet. And then the objective is like this. Provide, they have a bunch of bunch of geospatial data, 2D geospatial data, three-dimensional geospatial data, and other some important additional data. Also, they want to provide not only geospatial data, but also analysis functions through the web using WPS, OGC WPS. So this is the brief introduction of this project. So this is the background and the goal of this project. As you see, uh, Actually, currently they are using ESRI web, uh, ARC, 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 whatever, I don't know, actually, I haven't ever used the ESRI product, so anyway, they use the ArcGIS portal or something like that. For 3D service, they are currently using a, a Skyline software, Terra Explorer or something like that. So they want to replace all of them with open source based one because Korea Ministry of National Defense paid so much money to the ESRI and the Skyline Soft and the other hexagons and, and the other companies. So they want to reduce the license cost. At the same time, they want to reduce the technical dependency on specific companies and specific technologies. This is uh, overall background. So as uh, with this background, their project goal was very simple. They want to replace almost all the proprietary system with our open source based ones. So this is the background and the goals. Here now you can see the uh, depends as uh, overall architecture of this system. So there is a web-based 2D, 3D geoportal system. And then the, through this system, we can service the vector maps, special images, including satellite images, drone images, aerial photos, and the 3D data. They have a bunch of 3D data, including uh, North Korea's uh, capital, Pyongyang's buildings, and uh, other nuclear facilities. <laughs> and other things, uh, I forgot that the, uh, this is a stream, video streaming. Anyway, um, so they want to service all this kind of data through the web to the military officers. Imagine that we, Korea, have around 600,000 soldiers. Wow, we have really many soldiers in our, uh, in our country, so they need many geospatial information at the, at the various levels. So. So this is a conceptual architecture. This is a target system. So they want a pure open source based uh, uh, web geoportal system. So we uh, designed this kind of things. As you see, uh, uh, almost all the systems are based on open source software. So they have a bunch of data and then the, we can ingest the data to the uh, military geoportal system. And uh, we make use of PostGIS and the geo server and then the other things for the service. And uh, we needed to provide the uh, integrated search, memnote, coordinate capture, layer control, 3D model visualizations, attribute retrieval, 3D related APIs, and other things. In short, they want to have a web-based QGIS. So without installing any additional software, uh, we should provide the data. At the same time, this kind of analytic functions to the military officers uh, uh, with, with, without considering the two-dimensional or three-dimensional. <laughs> so this is the overall scope of project. So we should, we, we prepare the hardware and then the, we installed the open source software and then the, 
Uh, we also installed the many uh, uh, FOSPOGE software like uh, GeoWebCache, PostGIS, PostgreSQL, GeoServer, op OpenGX SET, and uh, other things. And also, we needed to import the data for service, so vector maps, REST maps, and the 3D data, including DEM, D DSM, 3D models for uh, missile targeting, and the time series satellite data. Actually, we have many uh, Earth observation satellites uh, to monitor North Korea. So uh, almost every day, we can get the many uh, satellite images. So we need to, uh, we needed to retrieve the data uh, retrieve the satellite images very easily. Also, POIs and other things. And then uh, we needed to implement this kind of analytic functions. So this is a required, detailed de required list. So hardware softwares, as you can see, the almost all the software components are open source based. GeoServer, GeoTools, GeoWebCache, Apache Tomcat, PostgreSQL, SQL, PostGIS, Margo 3D, that is the open source project developed by my company. And then the OpenGX, that is also open source uh, uh, project developed by uh, Mango system. Actually, OpenGX provides more than 200 uh, analytic functions. Out of uh, 200 analytic functions, uh, Korean military officers selected six only for, uh, only for the uh, military user, uses. And then the layer controls like QGIS or UDX, we need to uh, adjust the G order, and also we need to control the opacity, also we need to change the colors and the styles. Also, we should provide a, a very easy 2D, 3D switchings and the 3D draping and the UX and the other things. And the information search, integrated search, POIs, address, mem name, mem number, national grid, whatever. And then the, they want to coordinate capturing, so including MGRS and then the UTM, DD, DMS, and the, uh, TM, whatever. And also, we need to record the coordinate history and the address search. Yeah, and then we provide some uh, measuring tools, measuring distance, measuring area. Also, as uh, analytic functions, we provide the radial line of sight analysis. We provide linear line of sight analysis to uh, assess the uh, possibility of assassinations, and then the. Uh, terrain profile analysis, highest and low, lowest point detection, and routing like uh, Google Maps, and then the threat domes, it's a half dome, and then the map note and other things. And uh, finally, we carried out the performance test uh, as a part of the site acceptance test. Yep. So, results. This is a top secret, so you should not take a photo picture of this. <laughs> so actually, around 30 terabytes of the data are serviced through the web right now. And then the, uh, here, lots of, lots of vector maps are serviced through the web. And then the, for the armies, for the navies, for the air forces, uh, there are a bunch of, bunch of vector data, so you can imagine. And then the also lots of lots of raster data, satellite imagery data, drone data, and then the aerial photos. Yeah, so many. So around the total size of these maps and then the rest of data is around 30 terabyte. And then the, they also have very confidential 3D data yeah, covering South Korea and North Korea as well. So. Actually, they have all the building information in Pyongyang, the capital city of North Korea. So other facilities covering the North Korea. And uh, is, this is an implementation result. So uh, this is a system architecture of our system. So as I already mentioned, we make use of existing open source GIS project, PostgreSQL, PostGIS, GeoServer, GeoTools, and the GeoWebCache to increase the service speed of the tile map. So and then the for 3D dimensional service, we make use of cgm.js, and then the on top of cgm.js, uh, we are using a mago 3d.js. Actually, this morning I talk about the mago 3d project, and then the OpenGXT, yeah, okay, OpenGXT is uh, 
uh, analytic function library. That's just a library. If you put the, just the WAR file to the Geo server, and then the OpenGXT extends the uh, Geo server to the analytic server. So uh, our client and the server communicate through the WPS. So uh, if we have another analytic server over there, we can make use of that through the web public web processing service as well. And uh, there is a very complicated and very large size 3D models they have. So we, we converted that to our own F4D format and the service is through the web like this. So this is a real case and uh, this is user interface. So if you type in the, the, if they type in the anything about the POIs or address, national grid, mem name or mem, uh, mem number, whatever. And then the, the result will be popped up left side, like the left side, and just click the result, and then the map directly go there. And then the, this is a web-based 2D 3D integrated user interface. So left side is a two-dimensional, and the right side is a three-dimensional. Just click on the uh, button on uh, top right side of, of the button, and then the 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 user interface will be switched from 2D to 3D and uh, back and forth as well. And just like uh, normal GIS, we can click on the features and we can get the attribute information like this. And uh, also here, layer control, we provide a web-based layer control box. So you just easily adjust the opacity and the styles and the other things, thickness as well. And this is a dynamic door setup. Actually, we are very familiar with two-dimensional maps. So if you are trying to use the three-dimensional maps, sometimes you are lost where the nose is. So we provide a dynamic nose setup like that. And if you click the nose setup, and then the automatically that uh, direct the uh, head to the no, uh, map north. Also, we provide uh, very powerful coordinate capture functions. So if you click on the screen, you can get the uh, uh, multiple coordinates like uh, MGRS, UTM, DD, DM, TEMS, and the TEM. Lots of, lots of coordinate system they use because uh, we are ally of US military. So we, we are compliant with the US, US Army's system. At the same time, we need compliant with our civil coordinate systems. So there are lots of, lots of coordinate system we need to, uh, we need to consider. Also, unit of length, measuring unit. So there are meters, kilometers, nautical miles, inch, foot, yard, mile, because a uh, nautical chart for the Navy and the nautical, uh, and then the Air, Air Force map, they use a nautical mile. So we, uh, we provide that kind of measuring conversion tools like that. Okay, I will talk about analysis functions. As I already mentioned, uh, we have more than 200 analytic functions in OpenGXT, but uh, we had a discussion with our client and then they selected only six because the level of understanding of GIS is totally different. This system is not for professional. This system is for the general military officers. So they limited the uh, analytic functions only this kind of six. So now you can see the, and uh, however, we provide uh, two different types of uh, uh, terrain analysis, DEM-based one, at the same time, DSM-based one, because they have the building information. So this is a profile analysis. So if you click on the uh, start point and then the end with the end point, and then you can see that this kind of the profile very easily. We uh, make use of the WPS to conduct this kind of analysis as well. This is a line of, radial line of sight analysis, and then the, uh, also we uh, make use of the WPS to to, to see which areas uh, we can see, which areas we cannot see, and then the, this is the highest lowest point detection. I don't know why this is so important to military guys, but they want this kind of things to plan a military operation. So we put this kind of analytic functions to their system. And then the routing. Routing is also very important because this is about the logistics. So uh, if, if uh, military officers click one point and then another point, it automatically uh, provides information, turn by turn information like this. So we make use of PG routing. So as you know, PG routing is a, a, is a plugin of the post GIS, so we can easily uh, use that. And uh, this is a threat dome. So uh, it's just a half dome, but uh, 
Let's imagine that uh, if you have a cannon, yeah, ground to uh, surface to air cannons, and then the, you can imagine that the, we can defend this kind of area with our uh, surface to air cannons. So, last and last, this is a site acceptance test result. Ministry of National Defense is not an easy organization. They are very, very conservative to, to accept new technologies and to new trends. So we should have, we should go through this kind of test. So now we carried out this kind of benchmarking test. So you can see the blue triangle is ESRI response time, you can see. And then the orange cross is the GeoSub response time. And then the GeoSub open source response time was uh, around 1.22 million seconds. It means we won. So our, <laughs> yes, that's why I'm here. <laughs> this is a first forge conference. <laughs> so we won. And then the, our client was very, very happy with this result. So, so all the source codes are here. You can, there is a OpenGX site. You can download all the source code there, and also Mago 3D site here, also you can see the many things. Uh, the, here is the software license. So what are the outcomes? Our clients are quite satisfied with this result, and they signed another contract with my company. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, oh, now that, oh. yeah, yeah. <laughs> I just appreciate it to my client. <laughs> so they, yeah, 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 they actually, so uh, it triggered the active adoption of open source in Ministry of National Defense, and they signed a new contract with my company, so I'm very happy with that. And then the, the most important thing is that they reduced the license cost drastically. And then the, also, it means that now they can install the software very easily, and then that will increase the accessibility to their geospatial data. It's very important because they have a bunch of, bunch of data, but it's very hard to access that data. But now the things are changing. So this is uh, expected benefits. So they now are trying to reduce the dependency, and they now can reduce the license fee. And uh, there was actually uh, uh, interoperability issues between uh, uh, different systems. There is a hexagon system, and here ESRI system. There is a Skyline soft. So they had headache how to integrate all the things as a uh, uh, flow. So, but uh, they're trying to integrate the open source in their uh, production process, and uh, they will change all the things. Okay, and here is the, actually, this is the, I know, this is demo site. Here is no computation data. <laughs> so we just provide uh, available data like uh, 3D models and uh, open street maps and other things. But uh, you can enjoy all the uh, analytic functions like this. Here, uh, line of sight and then the uh, profile and then the routing, threat dome and other things. Also, actually, um, we also provide very interesting uh, uh, time series detection, but uh, time is running out. So I would like to round up this my presentation. Okay, and then the, let's have a uh, Q and A session. Okay, thank you. So your company should give you a big raise, and if it is your company, you should give yourself a big raise. Uh, yeah. Thank you so much. So questions? Any question? Yeah. Yep. Well, thank you. Uh, how do you, if you do, uh, deal with uh, tactical graphics and rendering of tactical graphics as of military standards? Pardon? How do you deal with rendering of tactical graphics, tactical graphics. as of standards and middle standards? Uh, yes, yes, I know that. Middle 25, for instance? Yeah, yeah. Actually, uh, this phase, this year, 
we are trying to import the kind of symbols to our new systems. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's uh, based in a in a SVG format, and then the we will cut that, and then we import the new system. Uh, I have a question considering uh, threat domes uh, about explosions and the uh, extension of explosion. Uh, I have. Um, I wonder if you do you uh, consider obstacles and do you take uh, con obstacles uh, uh, into consideration while do you model those domes or it's uh, easily uh, hemisphere? That is just a half dome. Okay. Yeah, it is, uh, as I already mentioned, this is not a uh, system for the professional. This is mm -hmm. only for the general users. Uh, yeah, the, the target audience will be the 600,000 military soldiers, just like a private team. Or, uh, yeah, yeah. Okay, thank you very much. Yeah. How do you deal with the security analysis of the open source software? Do you do analytics on every time you pull up a new update? Yeah, actually uh, there is an uh, uh, intelligence agency in Korea as well. They, uh, they have their own tools and uh, we need to go through to their security, uh, I forgot the name of that, but anyway, we should uh, pass through the test. But they do not care much about the open source itself. Open source does not send any information to outside of the organizations. Binary file, will send the security information to the outside of the organization. Does it make sense? So they, they just uh, installed their security check system and then they will monitor whether this kind of system will send out uh, very sensitive information to the outside of the military or not, yeah. Yeah, and then this is the closed military intranet. Nobody can access. Actually, only uh, military officers can access this kind of things. This is uh, just internet. Yeah. However, at, that, at the same time, however, we need to go through the kind of secret test. Yeah. Yeah. May, uh, so uh, you have ability to show uh, raster data like uh, of observation data, yeah, on uh, 3D geoportal like Cesium uh, engine. Uh, do you have experience to show? Uh, of observation data on uh, on north or south pole, uh, for example, MODIS weather data. Uh, I know that uh, Cesium have uh, only one projection, like EPG uh, forty two twenty three, if I remember correctly. Uh, but this projection uh, very big uh, for big uh, uh, low resolution images uh, on the polis. Uh, do you have experience with uh, show these uh, images on these uh, degrees, high degrees, uh, up than 80? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Actually, in my opinion, your question is uh, a little bit far from this project. Actually, we are just focusing on the Korean Peninsula, but uh, my company is still uh, involved in a research project with the Korea Polar Research Institute. And then, uh, as you mentioned, uh, it's not so easy to trap the data over the high altitude, uh, high latitude area like. Uh, Arctic and the Antarctic, but uh, actually I'm just a businessman and I don't know much about uh, technical issues in detail, but uh, my uh, colleague, uh, Mr. Jung, is now uh, involved in uh, this the kind of project. We are currently working with the uh, Korea Meteorological Agency and then they have uh, their own meteorological satellite and then they also capture the images uh, over the North Pole and the South Pole as far as I know. And then the, maybe she can answer to you but the problem is that she cannot speak English. Yeah. <laughs> so I can translate your question to her after the session, okay? okay. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Other questions? Okay, 
So uh, before we finish, I have a little announcement. The coffee break uh, should be at the first floor. So when we're going to end, please don't uh, stay at this floor. We need to proceed down, cleaning and other. Oh. Yes. And thank you very much. Thank you all. Thank you, Tom, Ladislav, and thank you, Shangri, and the team.